Hi, everybody. So good to see you again. So what I am going to be talking about is um, our science and social studies activity this week. So last week we learned how to collect nature. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're studying play and in Tahoe, um, we love to play in nature. So we're gonna continue to learn more about nature, which does have to do with play. Um, just knowing our environment is really, really important. And so today, um, I want to introduce you to a new learning target. This is something throughout the week that you can work on, okay? So here's a learning target. It says, I can identify a native Tahoe plant or animal. So identify means find. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to draw a picture, I'll do it like this, draw a picture of a magnifying glass. That's what this is. That's it, whoa, it looks like something else, but this is a magnifying glass, and we use it to look closely at something, and maybe we're looking closely at a little flower. Okay, so identify a native Tahoe plant or animal. So we know what a plant is, and I'm just gonna draw a picture of a plant. So that, yep, here's the plant. Animal, I'm gonna draw a picture of a, what am I gonna do, a squirrel. I have to look at it though if I do a squirrel. Okay, it's a squirrel tail. The whole body, little feet, little. Okay, there's my squirrel. <laughs> so I can identify, which just means to look, to find, to look closely, a native Tahoe plant or animal. Now, the word native, this is a really interesting word. What this means is from here, from Lake Tahoe. So, for example, a zebra is not native it is not from lake tahoe it doesn't come if we saw a zebra in the woods we'd wonder what in the world it was doing here it's harder to see like plants and other types of animals that one is really easy um and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you some pictures of some native tahoe plants or animals now Today it was really smoky and so I didn't, I would have done this lesson outside, but I wanted to stay healthy and so I stayed inside and so instead I'm going to share my screen with you. <coughs> Let's even make me cough a little bit, jeez. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you some native Tahoe plants and animals. Okay, so let's see here. Here we go. That always shows up. We're not doing that one. We're going to go here. Okay, so these are animals and plants in Lake Tahoe. Some of these are actually endangered species, which, mean, which means plants are animals that are having a hard time surviving right now. Ooh, ouch. I'm okay. Okay, here we go. So we've got a black bear right here is a black bear. And if you can see one of these and you really like it, you can actually pause the video because at the end of this, I'm gonna ask you to draw something about, some, or not something about, to draw a plant or an animal and then have your mom and dad help you find one interesting fact about the animal. So <clears throat> here we go. This is a black bear. Okay, and so if that's something that you really like, you can put this on pause so that you can see this or go back to this part of the video. This is a, it's called the Northern Goshawk. Okay, and a goshawk is a raptor that lives in the forests. Um, hmm, I feel like sometimes I get these mixed up with red tail hawks. Those are pretty cool. A yellow-bellied marmot. 
That is another type of animal that lives in Lake Tahoe. <clears throat> now this is an endangered species. It is called the Sierra Nevada yellow legged frog. I love that frog. <laughs> Mountain whitefish is another animal. This, I've never seen one of these. They're called picas, but they live here too. Snow plants, that is something else. Native plant, these are really, really beautiful. And then we have our sugar pines. And this is really interesting. So this is called Tahoe yellow cress. This is everywhere, actually. A uh, willow fly catcher is a bird. And there's also so, so, so many more. Can you hand me that book that's right there? I am getting an assistant. <clears throat> this is a book you might have at home, too. Um, and so you can look through this book and find some different um, animals and plants that you like. There's so many. I love this book. So many plants and animals in this book. Um, you can use this website or you can actually go outside. Hopefully the smoke is better this week. At some point during this week and you can find something that you want to sit down and you want to draw. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you one way to do this job okay so we're gonna look at the snow plant which is one of my favorite plants around Lake Tahoe and you have a nature journal that I gave you and so um, or that your parents got for you it is a journal with some paper in it and so you get to use one of those pieces of paper if you don't have a journal that's fine you can use any piece of paper this is a nature journaling activity that I did um, a while ago but I'm going to show you a new one. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, so <clears throat> whether or not you go out into nature and do this, or if you do this inside your house, what you're going to need is a piece of paper, sorry, a pencil <laughs> and a piece of paper. Okay, um, if you do find this thing outside on a walk, you can actually have one of your adults take a picture of this thing. So then you can go back inside and draw it as well. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna draw a snow plant. So I'm actually gonna move the paper long ways like this. And remember with drawing, nothing has to be perfect. Um, and I'm going to keep looking back at the picture, which, which I would suggest that you do as well. So snow plants kind of have these leaves or like petals that kind of go, they kind of curl. There's a lot of them. They go in and out like this. And they're like, it's kind of big at the bottom and then it, and then it gets smaller at the top and this is just quick i'm doing a quick one okay quick one okay they actually come like straight out of the ground right here okay so i'm gonna do there was two so i'm gonna do another one over here And they have lots, I mean, there's so much detail on these, but again, you know, this does not have to be perfect. Okay, it's just important that we're trying our best. It's kind of hard to see, huh, what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Okay, something I'm going to do is, oh, that's a little, um, and I want you to do it or an adult, one of your adults to do it or um, anyone that's around to help you with this or you can do it. I want you at the top to label what the thing is. So if it's a bear or whatever kind of plant it is, even if you don't know, you can say unknown plant, <laughs> but I know what this one is. And so I am going to label this a snow plant. And remember, you can have an adult help you with that part as well. So there's your snow plant. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to color it in. 
And so I'm looking for my crayons. Hmm, I have to go find my crayons. Okay, I found my crayons. <laughs> and I'm gonna share the screen again so that you can see what color this is. It's really important when we're doing sort of like nature drawings that we're drawing, and especially in kindergarten, that we are drawing things the way that we see them. There are going to be so many times when we can draw whatever colors that we want to draw. Um, but sometimes you're gonna have a job like this, like in this job throughout this week. Um, sometimes you're going to have a job where you need to draw real colors of things, okay? So I'm gonna show you a, the real color of the snow plant, okay? There it is. So it is bright red. So I'm gonna go into my crayons and I'm going to find the brightest red that I can possibly find. This is why I love crayons. It could be that. Let's see, that might be the one. Maybe like that. Ooh, 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 or like that. Okay, so I have a few colors. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little test first. A little test up here on this. Okay, that's too pink. That might be the color, a little orangey. That is mm, too pink. So I'm gonna use this like orangey color. And I am now going to start coloring this in, okay? Coloring this part in. I'm coloring inside of my pencil drawings, maybe you do the same thing. If we were in class, I would ask you to do that, to first draw in pencil and then color in with crayon or marker. Yeah, you can use any type of thing to color this in. So it could be crayon, marker, pen, Again, you and your adults decide what it is. I know there are white spots here, so I might go back later and fill that in. Okay, I'm gonna actually just stop for a second because I, you know I would finish that whole thing. And so the next part of this job is to find one interesting fact that's interesting to me, not to anybody else, right? What's interesting to me about this snow plant. So I'm gonna read this to you and I am going to look for something interesting. So it says, this beautiful and unusual plant can be seen in springtime among melting snow patches in Tahoe's forests. The snow plant does not contain chlorophyll like most green plants, which can, seen, can be seen in its bright crimson, which is like a really, really red color. These plants are parasitic, which means they feed off of the soil fungus or mushrooms attached to green plants roots where the fungi get water sugar and nutrients like vitamins so that's really fascinating to me i really liked that part <coughs> excuse me about the chlorophyll so um i'm really curious about that too because you know i love chlorophyll the last video that i did i talked about how the plants take back in the chlorophyll um during the you know fall time so that's the fact that i'm gonna write down here. I want you to decide with your adult what you would like to write, what type of a fat fact you would like to write. So I really liked the fact that they, do, they don't um, use chlorophyll. So I'm going to write that down here. I'm going to say, and your adults would do this for you. So snow plants don't, I said use, but they don't have, don't have 
chlor oh boy how do i spell that chlorophyll it's a weird one i'm gonna have to look back at how to spell that one <laughs> snow plants don't have chlorophyll that's not how you spell that snow plants don't have chlorophyll and eat off of other plants roots it's called they are parasites so i'm going to write that they are parasites okay so your nature journal might look something like this where you have a drawing of something and a label of what that thing is and then you also might have some writing that is the interesting fact okay now you can do one of these or you can do five of these this week, okay? So that is your job, your assignment, your work to do this week is to go out and find, right? <clears throat> Here's our, our learning target. Some of it got a little smudged. I can identify a native Tahoe plant or animal. Okay, and please reach out if you need any help, okay? I 